Hey there folks, Ben Farrell for Ben Farrell Freelance. This is episode eight, and this week we are talking about writing what's most vivid. Hey there, Ben Farrell for Ben Farrell Freelance. This week's subject is one of my favorites. I've done workshops with young writers about it, and it's a really good way to get people started when they've done all their homework and they're ready to start writing. Sure. I'm trying to write a scene of a princess, a prince, and a dragon, but I can't come up with anything. Well, what do you have so far? What's in your head? A dragon is blindfolded walking across a skinny bridge. While the dragon can't see, the princess runs away. What do you have before that? I don't know. I can't come up with anything. Well, you know, what you do is, if you're having trouble getting started writing, what you do is take that moment that you have in your head and start writing just that scene. Oh, so like I write it on this piece of paper and when it comes that time, I just write and put it, add it back in? Yeah, work your way backwards. Since that's what's already in your head, start by writing that scene. Okay. That's right. And it's an old joke among writers that the hardest words to write are the very first ones. Whether it's fade in, lights up, or once upon a time. So when I was younger and I would come up with a movie idea, I would literally try to write it from fade in to fade out. And that was such a struggle until I suddenly realized how much easier it would be to write the scenes I have in my head already for the story. So let's say I have an idea for a murder mystery and the only thing really I have solid in my head is the awesome plot twist. And that's what I wanna base the entire book or the entire movie based on is this plot twist that's gonna make everybody's jaw drop. And I start with Once Upon a Time and it's such a struggle getting to this awesome plot twist that everybody's gonna remember. So that's what I would do when I was younger. I'd literally start with Once Upon a Time and punch and kick and cry and end up in a fetal position and just to get to my awesome plot twist. So of course now I'm kicking myself because the answer was so simple. Write the plot twist first. Am I suggesting your plot twist should be the opening scene of your play or your movie? The plot twist should be your first chapter? No, I'm saying if your plot twist is in chapter 30, start by writing chapter 30. Start by writing scene five of act two. There's no rule that says you can't do that and at least what you have up here is on paper and it's no longer a thought. So now that's what I do when I'm working on a new stage play is I write the scenes in my head that are already in my head. I don't worry about plot from A to Z. How am I gonna grab people? How am I gonna reveal everything? I, I, I save all that. Just write the scenes that are most vivid. Write the chapters that are most vivid in your head. Even if the chapter numbers change, obviously you're gonna change everything as you go. However, by doing that, what you're doing is you're establishing yourself benchmarks. At that point, what you're doing is writing from benchmark to benchmark to benchmark. So your project is going to evolve as you continue to write and connect those dots. And basically that's all you're doing. You're playing connect the dots until you get the whole picture, but that picture is gonna change and your benchmark scenes are gonna change. Go ahead and accept that. They're not gold, they're not in concrete. They're just getting you started and getting what's the best in your head right now out on the page. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna tell you about the story of how I got inspired to write one of my stage plays called Inked. And it's about two tattoo artists who are working together in the same shop and they both have very dark secrets and their secrets start to overlap and then all of a sudden they're both in danger. This is how I came up with it. So I was waiting for a friend to get done at the grocery store. I was standing at the front of the store and on the community board, there was all these missing kids and their statistics and where they were last seen and how old they should be and everything like that. And I was looking at them and I was like, man, I've, I've seen these so many times throughout my life. I've never seen any of these kids that I've recognized or anything. How crazy would it be if I actually recognized one of these missing kids? And then I thought even further, I said, you know what? What if I was dating somebody for a while? Really, I thought she was the one and she's a single mom and I meet her kid and we're all getting along just fantastic and I really think this is my forever. And then I'm in this situation and I look up and one of these missing kids happens to be her daughter. What would I do? What would anybody do? Would you confront the person or would you just choose to be in denial and continue living happy and oblivious? So once I had that concept, I wrote that scene out. I didn't even have a plot. I barely even had a play idea, but I got that scene out where one person confronted the other person that they were in love with because they realized that their child was a missing child. As I started to develop a story around that and started to write benchmarks, 
all leading up to what I thought was going to be a fairly big part of the beginning of the story. But by the time I developed everything and started writing other benchmarks, that one benchmark that was in my head, that one scene that I wrote that was most vivid, ended up being a very small part of the play way into the second act. I guess what I'm saying is, don't be afraid to change anything as you're working on it. Let it have a life of its own. And if you've gotten to the point where you can start writing, then write what's most vivid first. Maybe you are able to write your project A to Z, and that's great if you can. I admire that. I just can't do it. And for those of you who can't, just write D to Z to Q to T to L until you connect all the dots and you have your alphabet soup. That was stupid. Ben Farrell for Ben Farrell Freelance. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hey folks, before I let you go, I wanted to let you know that with the launch of this vlog, we are going to be running a contest and I'm gonna run a new contest every two months. So for this first two months, we are going to do a naked selfie contest. So no while you gotta... naked selfie contests. Stick to the script. Fine. What the contest will be is email me a subject or a topic you'd like me to do an episode for. And if I choose your topic, and I will choose a topic for every contest period, then I'll send you a copy of one of my plays for free. So for this first two months, we're going to feature Skin in the Games. And if you want to learn more about it, then visit BenFarrellWriter.com and click on Stage Plays. It's not as exciting as a naked selfie contest, but at least it's free stuff. Ben Farrell for Ben Farrell Freelance. I'll catch you next time.